So before proceeding the uh, interview process, so let's me just uh, brief me about yourself so we can then start. Okay. So my name is Rajesh Khatta. Okay. And currently I have 9.4 years of experience on uh, various technology like uh, Linux, okay. uh, AWS Cloud and DevOps. So mm -hmm. Linux perspective, I was work on uh, Red Hat Enterprise OS, Suze Enterprise OS, Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora and Kali Linux. Okay. okay. And uh, regarding the AWS services, I was work on lots of administrator services like EC2 service, load balancer, Atos Cleaning Group, mm -hmm. uh, VPC, Route 53. Uh, like this cloud or cloud trail, all these services which is related with the administrator perspective. Okay. And for DevOps perspective, I was uh, work on uh, Docker, Kubernetes, Ansible, Terraform, Terraform mm -hmm. Cloud. Uh, all these services uh, I was work uh, and I have hands on experience on all these platforms. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. What are the main uh, skill set you have? Okay, so mainly I was work on uh, bash scripting. Then I was work on AWS Cloud with all uh, nearly uh, 15 to 20 services. And for DevOps perspective, I was uh, work on uh, Jenkins and Civil mm -hmm. Terraform and a little bit on Kubernetes services. Okay. And the monitoring tool? Uh, monitoring tool, currently I don't use monitoring tool. So we have a separate team for the monitoring perspective, like okay. uh, Graphon Ion. Uh, all these tools currently uh, mounting by all the teams. Okay, okay, good. So, what are the day-to-day -day activities like roles and responsibility you have? Okay, so my day-to-day -day activities is like uh, managing the Jenkins and like a master slave architecture, mm -hmm. uh, executor jobs. Sometimes mm -hmm. masters, sometimes slave was failed uh, for connections and all. So we need to perform the troubleshooting. Currently, I'm working with the US project. So uh, this project is having on nearly 10 plus clients. So mm -hmm. daily day-to-day -day activities like we got the issues from the clients. And as per the request, we need to resolve these issues. And yeah, so depend upon the Kubernetes ports issues like Jenkins issue, EC2 service issue, database issues, VPC mm -hmm. appearing issues and all. So depend upon the requirement, we need to resolve all these things. Okay. Good. So uh, which tools you are using in the project right now uh, in terms of uh, managing the tickets and the deployment end-to-end? -end? Uh, Jira ticket. Okay. And the other tools like uh, for the deployments and uh, monitoring. Uh, and deployment the... perspective, we are using Jenkins. Mm -hmm. And for monitoring perspective, we are using Grafana. Okay. So normally when you get any issues, like uh, suppose you have any production alert, so how you uh, tackle this error? What end-to-end uh, -end process you follow normally? Okay. So basically in my project, currently we are using Grafana. Okay. So and this Grafana monitoring tool is managing by all the team. So mm -hmm. yes, we are getting the email alerts. We are getting the SMS alerts from this team. And mm -hmm. if it's an issue like in critical state, something is down and all. So then yes, we are getting the call from this team. Mm -hmm. Like for POC team members, like uh, this, this service is down and we need to take actions immediately. And mm -hmm. it's in warning state. It's like uh, some CPU utilization, RAM utilization, native utilization going in critical state or in warning state. Then yes, we are getting SMS and email alerts from this team. Okay. So as you said, we have nine plus years of experience. So what are the main uh, troubleshooting area you have performed? You want to yeah. uh, extend? Yeah, basically for troubleshooting perspective, uh, like uh, we need to add uh, servers in any domain. Sometimes server is not uh, adding in AD domain. So we need to perform troubleshooting, like uh, just check the servers. What is the current state of the servers? Like why this server is not adding in AD? Uh, is this bash scripting or any automation tool is failing or not? Like EC2 machine is added in uh, hosting properly or not? So mm -hmm. like this uh, troubleshoot we are performing, like uh, for Jenkins perspective, we are uh, using master slave architecture. So sometimes slave server is not attaching to the master server. Mm -hmm. like. Uh, timeout uh, sessions, uh, mm -hmm. timeout error, or uh, sometimes user is not able to connect with the master server, sometimes disk utilization issue, sometimes uh, jobs is executing maximum on the slave machines or node machines. And because of uh, these job issues, like, like a huge amount of test cases, mm -hmm. slave servers uh, resources utilization is more than critical state or warning state. So that time slave server is not responding properly. And for Kubernetes perspective, like
I'm sorry, your voice is not audible. So we need to perform troubleshooting. Okay. Okay, good. So, suppose you are an architecture or a cloud engineer and you got the any request like, you know, the creation of the resources, uh, suppose EC2 instance, database and all. So what uh, process to follow before creating the resources, like uh, what are the requirements you you, will, you collect? So okay. what you, you will follow the process? Okay. So in my project, like uh, we are getting a request from the client, like uh, we have a service now tool. Mm -hmm. So the client will raise a ticket in a service now, like mm -hmm. what is the, what types of servers he require, like EC2 and instance type, mm -hmm. uh, disk space, network and all. So all this uh, parameter we already uh, fill in a service now. So depend upon the requirement, we get the request and we need to take the approval from our project manager or from our managers. Mm -hmm. So once we get the approval from the team, members then yes then uh, we start to launch one EC2 machine using Terraform or if required then it's a temporary perspective then yes we just launch this server manually okay so uh, uh, configuration basically instance type on what per, uh, criteria do you define which, is which uh, type of instance you should select yeah, so basically if our, we got the requirement like uh, for general perspective, then yes, we use T3 or mm -hmm. T3A or T4G uh, instance family. Or mm -hmm. if we got the requirement like basically for CPU perspective, like the XYZ application is using more than uh, like 60-70% uh, of CPU mm -hmm. and less utilization of RAM, then yes, we focus on C5 or C6 instance family. Mm -hmm. And if the application is uh, using lots of RAM, then uh, we are using R4, R5, R6 instance family. So if we use uh, upgraded instance family, then we can reduce the AWS cost as well as we can enhance the network uh, uh, utilizations and all. So depend upon the requirement and if we are getting the requirement like uh, AI, ML, uh, machine learning uh, requirement like gaming perspective and all, mm -hmm. then we use uh, ML instance type. Okay. So uh, as an over of infrastructure, once you de uh, design and uh, deploy the infrastructure, mm -hmm. so which team basically do the auditing for the optimization level, you know, the cost optimization, because the cost uh, cost is very important uh, yeah. role to perform to reduce the cost or optimize. So what actions or audit you, you, you will perform to reduce the cost? Yeah, okay. for audit perspective, we have separate cloud governance team like Grafana and all these team is monitoring. Okay. For audit perspective, this team is just auditing our all the infrastructure. But actual actions is our role to take a actual actions on the server. Like uh, cloud yeah. governance team will just suggest us to uh, this X Y C two is your uh, under utilizations or disk space is under utilizations or X Y Z server is not using from last three months. So we are just getting the suggestions on the email so mm -hmm. according to that we need to take uh, actions for security perspective for aws cost reductions perspective like all these suggestions we are getting from this team and even though we can take the actions like uh, our slave machine is not utilization uh, from last one uh, one week mm -hmm. then according to that we can take actions from our side also and also yes we are getting the suggestions from separate team okay uh, let's say you have a uh, uh, three environments a dev, a dev test and production but for the as we know dev test uh, should not be run 24 by 7 right yes it should be down uh, automatically uh, in the of the business hours like uh, midnight weekend. Uh, it will start the uh, not the weekend on the daily basis it, it should start stop the uh, after business hours like uh, evening 7 a.m or 10 a.m uh, 10 p.m sorry okay. and it, it should start again early, next early morning like uh, 9 a.m or when the business start so how you can configure this uh, job or what uh, action you will take to automatically schedule this stop and start? Okay. So basically we are using a Lambda functions now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So using a Lambda functions, currently we are uh, just start and stop the servers. Okay. 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 So uh, this is the basic uh, functionality we are using, uh, using Python. So mm -hmm. on Saturday, Sunday, on the early morning, like uh, at nine o'clock, our mm -hmm. EC2 machine will start on dev environment. So using Lambda, uh, we are just starting the servers and mm -hmm. we are stopping the servers after working time and working dates. Okay. Uh, apart from Lambda function, any is there any other way? 
Uh, yeah, we are, uh, I guess, as per my knowledge, like AWS is providing one service uh, to uh, manage this service. But uh, I'm not sure exactly like uh, what service we need to use uh, using this. But I was uh, read one or two articles on the Google. Uh, mm -hmm. So using this service, we can start and stop the servers. Okay, good. Okay. So as an architecture or a cloud engineer, so overall, what best practices you can follow, you should follow to protect the infrastructure and the secure? Yeah, so first of all, we need to manage uh, security at VPC level also, like a NACL, Network mm -hmm. Access Control List. Yeah. Second of all, we need to mention, like we need to control our security at security group. Mm -hmm. And third layer is a firewall, like at uh, Linux server side. But normally, we uh, just off the firewall. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, like if we restrict to a specific ports, specific IP address, then using IP, IP tables or firewall, we can restrict it. But normally, we uh, configure security group, VPC, NACL. And the third thing is private public subnet. Okay, so mostly we focus on, uh, we launch uh, nearly all the servers on private subnet. We use mm -hmm. CloudFront load balancers for uh, to publish the website for outside mm -hmm. and route to this service. So these types of layers currently we are using. And yeah, definitely application servers, database servers, 100% uh, all these services launch in private subnet only. Okay. So and few you, exceptional, yeah, yeah few yeah. exceptional servers is on only public subnet. Okay. Are you using any Bastion server to connect or you are using a VPN in the project? Uh, yeah, currently we are using VPN service and uh, not uh, by any jump server or Bastion shell. Mm -hmm. uh, we are launching all these servers in AD domain only. Okay. Okay, we are not uh, accessing any EC2 server using SSH key pair and all. So mm -hmm. we just log in using AD domain only. And all these servers in a private. So nobody for jump servers. And uh, yeah, without VPN, we cannot log into any EC2 server. But yes, VPN and AD domain. Okay. So uh, when uh, we talk about the EC2 instance, so why we create the EC2, EC2 instance or what is the use cases for the EC2 instance? Okay, so use cases is like uh, if you compare the old technology and with AWS cloud, like uh, in previous technology, uh, hypervisor or hyper uh, virtualization techno technology, mm -hmm. we are using, we just, we are launching the actual servers in virtualization technology. The same thing is in AWS cloud, like we are launching one single server using EC2 concept. Okay, mm -hmm. so inside EC2 server, we are just, we need to install required application or you, we need to install required packages like uh, Apache NGINX, Apache Tomcat service or any database servers and all. So we need to install, configure all these settings in EC2 server. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a server, virtual server. Okay. And you can install uh, any service and host the website, right? Yeah, yes, packages. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now let's say uh, you have a requirement to uh, create the EC2 instance and uh, uh, install some packages like web server and deploy your websites. You know, mm -hmm. so instead of launching instance and then go to uh, you know connect the manually and uh, type the command one by one. So what are the other ways that you can automate this uh, by using any script okay, during so the we, launch of? Yeah. yeah. So we have two way to actually target. Like first of all, using user data, we can just uh, configure one bash shell script to install uh, and configure all these services okay. using user data. And mm -hmm. the second way is a Terraform. Like in Terraform also, we need to use a uh, user data scripts. But uh, in a single like Terraform uh, plan apply command, uh, we need to just uh, install all these services. And the third of, uh, third way is Ansible. Using Ansible, we can perform these uh, steps using Ansible also. Oh, great. So uh, once you install these applications, so now you want to uh, make sure that application service is running properly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So instead of using the URL in the browser to test the application URL is working fine or not, mm -hmm. uh, what are the commands or command line utility we can use to test our application URL that is working fine or not? Yeah. So using curl command, uh, we can cross specify it like curl, the mm -hmm. current localhost IP address, or you can use as a localhost also, or you can use as a private IP address, colon, what whatever we are using the ports. Mm -hmm. If it's 80, no required to mention any port. If it's a customized port, then you can mention as a 
colon eight zero eight zero nine zero nine zero and just test your uh, website is accessible or not. And the second command is a telnet, telnet, uh, you are the URL and space your port. If it's accessing properly using telnet command, then yes. And even though if uh, third way is maybe, uh, I'm not sure, but yes, you can ping the particular URL. If it's responding properly, then yes, this website is accessible. Okay. But in AWS cases, uh, ping service by default disabled, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Call command and duplicate definitely we can use for that. Yes. So now, uh, okay, so you have created the uh, infrastructure on the particular AWS account, but after some time, the company decided to close this AWS account due to some issues. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you need to migrate this all the EC2 instance to another AWS account. So how you can migrate this? Uh, yeah, so to migrating the EC2 servers, basically for EC2 servers only, the, uh, yeah, we need to create a AMI backup of all these servers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can just share uh, AMI backup to from one account to another account. Okay. Like uh, it's the only one way to sharing the AMI from one account to another account. And just we need to launch all this AMI to another account. It should be shared by public uh, or private network. Mm, public, not definite, but uh, yeah, publicly. Okay. It should be private actually, because uh, if you shared by public, no? Then uh -huh, that, yes, that, AMI, that AMI can be used by anyone. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Once we uh, share the AMI, we need to just click on the own privately on AMI console. And once we click on the own private, then we need to get a proper AMI ID and uh, AMI name. Okay. Yeah. Right. So now uh, for the EBS volume, right? So mm -hmm. you are using one application server and it's getting a uh, full, uh, it's a valid data, like, you know, uh, application data and the valid logs that is required that we don't need to we, uh, we should not uh, clear or delete any log files mm -hmm. and now in this situation you are uh, you know the production server is going on and you don't want to stop the server and increase the abuse volume okay so how you can do this uh, increase the uh, abuse volume basically without any uh, taking any downtime for, for production servers yeah yeah so uh, aws is suggest us to we can increase or we can extend the ebs volume on flight like uh, online without mm -hmm. any report or without any downtime so the first thing is if just take an example currently we have 20 gb of ebs root volume and we mm -hmm. need to extend from 20 to 30 gb mm -hmm. then just yeah uh, just uh, uh, click on the ec2 servers go on the volume section and uh, modify the volume from 20 to 30 gb and then just log in inside the EC2 machine, just execute LSBLK command to cross with okay. files extend from 20 GB to 30 GB. Okay. Then we need to execute grow part command. And mm -hmm. before grow part command, we need to execute df hyphen capital TH to so, cross verify the exact file system type. If it's a ext4 or it's a, a XFS file system. Yeah. So for the ext4 file system, uh, we need to execute grow part command, grow part slash dev and the volume name space one. So using this, we just ex we are the, we can able to extend the EBS volume, and then we need to execute research to fs slash dev slash volume name, and after that just cross with file using df h command. Then for the ext4 file system, we can extend this. And for the XFS volume, yeah, we need to execute growfs command, growfs slash dev slash volume name. And then we need to execute this slash to fs slash dev slash volume name. Then using this command, we can extend the uh, ABS volume without any downtime. Okay, good. So now let's say, uh, take another situation. Uh, you have a 20 GB uh, ABS volume on the web application server. And you find that during, during the inspection that, you know, the, all the application code is uh, properly there, but the web server log file is uh, consuming lots of disk space over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So without using RM command over there, uh, how you can uh, truncate or uh, no, clear that lo lo huge log files to get a free space. Okay. For deletion perspective, like uh, it's not a recommended way to delete the logs, but yeah, if we mm -hmm. want to truncate these uh, logs, then yeah. Uh, there is a truncate command also truncate mm -hmm. file name this file will be truncate and another way is to just mention the greater than symbol and mm -hmm. the file name so it will automatically uh, truncate all the files and the third way what is which is recommended way is to zip the that log file 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So just take the backup of this log file and just uh, archive this file using tar command, using uh, zip command and all. So whatever we require and just mm -hmm. take the backup of this. If this file is not uh, not required in after 30 days, 90 days, then yes, we can take mm -hmm. the actions for deletion perspective. Yeah. Great approach. Okay. So now coming to the monitoring part, uh, suppose let's say uh, you have created the issue instance and you, you will find there are uh, two checks, right? Before uh, yeah. instance coming into the healthy state. So what are the two checks are there? Yeah, so basically we use, uh, we used to call as a two by two uh, status check. Yes. So this is the uh, checking of the hardware basically mm -hmm. so one and two is a two way so one is a uh, hardware checking like uh, whatever the host machine at aws side so it will cross with file like all resources LAN cable networking uh ebs volume uh, ram cpu all these resources is properly accessible from host to vm vm mm -hmm. like a ec2 machine and mm -hmm. second check is like uh, connectivity like this ec2 server is accessible outside from host machine to the outside if okay. its connectivity is properly working then we are getting two by two status healthy servers if it's any one of the state like hardware issue or connectivity issue fail then mm -hmm. it will show one by two or uh, like this error uh, in a red mark okay if you got this uh, got this error then how you can troubleshoot or resolve this issue yeah, so AWS documentation has suggested us one or two way, like uh, the first way is a smart way, like just stop your server and start it again. So at the background side, it what happened, like the EBS, like this server will stop properly on that particular hardware. Then once we start this server, then it will cross verify again, like our hardware and connectivity is properly or not. If it's failing, then this server will launch on another this another host server automatically without any yes. downtime like we are stopping the server then it will require a downtime but without any issue this server will launch on another hardware mm, yes, yes okay correct so now uh, you have a requirement like uh, you need to uh, launch an ec2 instance but with the specific private ip address you know uh, normally we say uh, binding basically in dscp uh, concept mm -hmm. so in the aws side uh, if you uh, got this request create a uh, issue instance with the specific private IP address only. So how we can achieve this? With a specific private IP address. Yeah, normally we uh, aware like uh, we can attach uh, elastic IP address anytime. Okay, yes. just allocate and attach. But in the private uh, private IP address, yeah. we have some specific VPC CID range, right? 192, yes. 160 or something. Yes. So in that CID range, we, we need to uh, assign the specific IP address, private IP address basically. 192.168.10.1 suppose. So how you can assign this a specific IP address? Mm, I did not get chance to work on it. Like uh, I okay. did not get any specific requirement. Like we require only this IP address. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure for this. Okay. okay. No issues. So another one, uh, let's say uh, for the EC2 instance, basically, there are two things like right? AMI and snapshots. Mm -hmm. So what are the difference between that? AMI and EC2, uh, snapshot. Okay, so basically, uh, snapshot we call as a volume, and mm -hmm. AMI is a whole whole and soul backup. Like, uh, if it's a AMI, like uh, root volume, all these volumes is including in the AMI, like OS, all the permissions, each and everything, mm -hmm. and we can just share the AMI to one account to another account, one region to another region, all these things. Mm -hmm. And for snapshot perspective, if any particular institute machine is having multiple EBS volume, then we can take a special backup for this XYZ EBS volume only if we require. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can restore this EBS volume uh, like uh, using snapshot from one region to another region and all. And also for security perspective, we can use an encryption uh, technology. Mm -hmm. But normally uh, we can take the back, we uh, the snapshot concept is to take a specific backup of EBS volume. Mm -hmm. And for AMI, we need to take whole and sole uh, service backup. Okay, right. So now coming to the load balancer part. So let's say you have a, you are managing the uh, e-commerce kind of website, like you know, flip, flip, Flipkart or first or something. Mm -hmm. So uh, there there will be you know, there uh, the up, upcoming events is going on, like on the suppose tomorrow. 10 a.m. or something. So now you 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 will expect some surge, you know, in the traffic. You will get unexpected traffic in that event. So how on the load balancer side, how we can provision this kind of uh, situation, you know, infrastructure basically to handle this kind of large amount of requests for the specific time period. 
Okay. So basically, we are managing uh, like unexpected traffic or expected traffic uh, very smartly. Like uh, currently, we are using Atto Scaling Group. Okay, mm -hmm. to manage this uh, sudden traffic. So using Atto Scaling Group, uh, we can manage all these things. Like uh, uh, currently, launch configuration is we are not able to configure launch configuration. Mm -hmm. So the new concept has registered from AWS to launch template. So okay. using launch template and using Atto Scaling Group, we can configure the policies like uh, depend upon the network traffic depend upon the cpu ram utilizations and depend mm -hmm. upon the percentage okay. we can just launch one more server or two more servers and we can just reduce the uh, count uh, depend upon our policies uh, at a selling group policies okay? okay and just create the load balancer application or network load balancer whatever we require so mm -hmm. depend upon the load balancer we can just create the load balancer and attach all these servers in the uh, load uh, load value in attach load balancers okay mm -hmm. all the servers will be come in under the load balancer and traffic will be managed properly and using stickiness and all these uh, small concept we can manage all this traffic and yeah. uh, user sessions okay okay that is fine but you know uh, suppose we have a 30 minutes events you know and uh, launching the configuration suppose suddenly got traffic and cpu collection gets high so based on that you know we set the normal matrix to increase the servers basically mm -hmm. so it will take some time right uh, 10 5 minutes or something so in that situation maybe uh, user wait user will get slow performance or uh, sometimes you know timeout issue so to avoid uh, this kind of issues we there is a concept like a pre warming for the load balancer level so uh, we need to basically uh, to get this pre warming concept uh, concept configured we need to raise a ticket to AWS cloud support team. So uh, you need to mention all the requirements like on this particular events, we have a, we are expecting the surge in the traffic, you know, the high traffic. So just provision the uh, load balance and infrastructure from the backend side. So AWS cloud team will provision the, in the backend side, they will uh, scale basically the load balancer side. So uh, this way by using pre-warming concept, you can just handle this kind of uh, events, you know, for the larger amount of traffic. Yes. So now, uh, how to find the basically load balancer IP address from the AWS console? Load balancer is having a C name, hmm. but if you want to find the IP address, then uh, we need to use NS lookup command to cross verify the IP address, like NS lookup and mention the URL, like a C name uh, URL. So hmm. using this, it will just show the two IP address or the one IP address. Okay. And the uh, second way, I'm not sure, like from AWS side, we will get the IP address from load balancer, but uh, we got only CNAME, like a uh, URL only. Yeah, there is option uh, in the uh, you know, load balance. You can just copy the load balance and name there and go to your network interface, you know, network interface and just search the load balancer name there. You will get the private and public IP address. Okay. And maybe using NS lookup also, we will get yeah, the that is a different, uh, yeah, another way. So when you create the application load balancer, what is the default uh, balancing method uh, the load balancer use? Balancing method means in the sense uh, HTTP, HTTPS protocol. No, no, that is the listener part. Mm -hmm. What is the, you know, how load balance works basically on what method he load balance works. Suppose I have two uh, web servers and on the top of that, I'm using application load balancer and I'm hitting the application URL. So how it will uh, route the uh, traffic? Okay, on the basis of uh, like a round robin method, like yeah. a round robin algorithm. Mm -hmm. So the basically application load balance is like uh, works smartly. Like uh, if we get uh, any specific hit from X Y Z users, then application load balancer will cross verify the server which service is available properly. Okay. Okay. okay, if it's in two or more than two servers, then it will cross verify which servers is uh, properly available. Then this user will launch on that EC2 server. Hmm. And using the round robin algorithm also, it will work. Like first uh, hit will be on A server, then next hit will be on the B server. But server uh, resources is should be available. Then only round robin algorithm will work. Otherwise, it will cross verify the health. Mm -hmm. Server sales and then the session will serve on that particular XYZ institute server. Okay. Now, suppose if you want to bind a particular session to a particular instance, then what uh, configuration we need to change? Uh, like, as far as my knowledge, uh, we need to configure TTL time to live sessions. Uh, no, no. I mean, the uh, suppose I am just requesting the my application URL, I am requesting 
so i it that request should be go uh, for particular server only uh, during the any period okay 10 minutes or 5, 15 minutes something if i hit again that url then my request should be go to the server a and within a 5 minutes of time maybe uh, stickiness yes right correct. stickiness will uh, just yeah. stick the particular x user only on one particular yeah. server for the session binding yes yes so now coming to the ima uh, uh, roles mm -hmm. so now uh, you have a requirement like create the uh, suppose you have a hundred users okay apart from hundred users you want to uh, the task is like uh, give 50 users full access and other rest of the users need to only uh, you know read only access so uh, how you can just configure this uh, way like to handle this large amount of users will you go to particular individual users and assign this policy or how the better best way uh best way using the terraform like uh, using terraform we can create the users we can assign uh the group uh to particular users mm -hmm. create users and create a group yeah. mention all the permissions into the group and assign all the users to the group I and mean, it's a manual work mm -hmm. then uh, the same thing like create the group with a specific permission and add all these users into the group okay yeah correct so uh <clears throat> basically uh what is the difference between Administrator user and the power user in the AWS. Administrator user and power user. Power user. Uh, yeah. No, I did not heard about the power. There user. is a policy in the AWS basically. If you just definitely you can just have a look. Power power user access. So basically the difference is administrator has a full access similar to power user, but power user doesn't have uh, access to manage the users basically users and okay. groups. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now coming to the IMA users and roles. So what are the main difference uh, between that IMA users and the roles? User and the role. role. Okay. So basically, uh, user are able to log in uh, AWS console GUI mm -hmm. like console, and a role is basically uh, the permission which will assign to the AWS resources like for EC2 servers for ETS service and all. Mm -hmm. So basically, a role is used to uh, attach the role to the resources and it will uh, access all these services inside the AWS. Yeah. Okay. Any major other difference? Major one? Major one, like it will enhance the security. Like a mm -hmm. uh, user will uh, log into the uh, AWS console and it will, uh, as per the permissions, it will just go and perform the operation. But for role perspective, uh, the server will be access a specific resource or specific object mm -hmm. using role only. So we can restrict the permissions. Okay. So uh, IMA users will get a credentials, right? Access key and secret access key. Yes. So will that get same thing for the roles? No, role will not get the uh, secret key and access key. A user will get like for AWS CLA perspective, mm -hmm. but it's not a recommended way to use a, a secret key access key, secret key and access key. Mm -hmm. But if it's like uh, we have specific requirement, like uh, we need to access the resources from our laptop or from our outside, then yeah, in that case, we need to use secret key and access key, but it should be aware. Okay. Okay. Now coming to the A3 uh, part, so suppose you have a, you are working on for the project and you are the you know, large number of data or the, the store on the daily basis, but the requirement is you want to store only the last mo one month data and rest of the data, it should be deleted automatically. Okay. After the one month. So how you can configure the policy? Yeah. So there is a one concept of SC uh, lifecycle policy. Mm -hmm. So using standard uh, IA. These are like uh, three to four more uh, level of the storage. So glaciers and all. So using this, we can move our data uh, from last modified date to another level of server. Like uh, just take an example, we are just storing uh, the files and we need, we don't require after 30 days, then we can move these files uh, to another level of storage. Like uh, I forget the levels, but uh, we can move to gla uh, glaciers or something. Uh, there's one concept. Then we can mm -hmm. move all this data to the, that particular uh, storage. Then so using the life cycle. life cycle policy, yeah, yeah. we can uh, expire the data basically after one yes. year. Yes, yes. Right. Now the requirement is you have a S three bucket, okay? Mm -hmm. 
but that bucket should be accessible only for the your suppose uh, your VPN IP address. Your or, of organizer has VPN and there is uh, some specific IP address. So your bucket should be accessible only for the particular IP address. So how we can set up the bucket policy? One particular IP address only. Yeah, it should not be a publicly or some accessible anywhere. Uh, like we need to configure uh, the policies inside the uh, SC bucket. Mm -hmm. We need to set the uh, policies. But policies will be uh, depend upon the permissions, not a uh, IP address level. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, not sure like uh, to access the AC bucket I, uh, I, by IP address side. Okay. Yeah, basically you can configure the bucket policy and you can just uh, mention the IP address from where the bucket should be accessible. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, last one. So when you create the ST bucket, so what is the default storage class? Standard. Sorry? Standard storage class. Standard storage class. Okay. Is there any limitation for the bucket? Any file format not support or supported or some, something? Uh, limitations uh, as for like uh, we can store lots of uh, types of file system like uh, TXT and all. Mm -hmm. But uh, the storage limit is maybe uh, from 0 KB to 5 TB, nearly 5 TB or more than that. But mm -hmm. yeah, we have one specific limit, but nearly 5 TB we can store. And uh, we need to just refer the documentation, but we can store maybe uh, 10 or 15 GB of one single file. Mm -hmm. There is one limit uh, to store the file, but uh, there is one specific, but I'm not sure for this. Okay, sure. So now you have a, a data in the SL bucket. And you want to share with the uh, someone like, you know, or maybe you want to configure it in the applications like front end applications, mm -hmm. but instead of uh, granting the, or making the bucket publicly, you know, we can normally set the bucket policy to make it public the gate object basically. So instead of doing that, is there any other way that, you know, when the user requests for the bucket data, it should accessible within a, you know, for a specific time period. Okay. Is there so any... there's a, yeah, there's a one concept of single sign on. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we can just share, uh, no, not a SSO, like uh, uh, there's a one concept. So we can just share the objects for temporary perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you uh, 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 sign, you assign URL. Pre-sign URL. Okay. Pre-sign URL, yeah. Okay. So using pre-sign URL, we can share the objects for a specific time limit. Okay. Right. And we can... Um... Time, we can mention the time period, right? One yes. minute or one hour, something. Yeah. So it's our call, but uh, client side, it will accessible using mm -hmm. this and URL. Okay. So you have any static website and you want to host in the S3 bucket. So what is the best and secure way to host the website by using CloudFront? By using CloudFront. Okay. So I did not launch any website on the S3 bucket, uh, but yeah, we can, uh, we can just... Uh, copy all the HTML files in the SC bucket. We need to set the policies like uh, this uh, HTML files uh, should be accessible from outside, depending upon the policy and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will get one endpoint, SC bucket endpoint. Now we need to mention this endpoint in the CloudFront. Mm -hmm. Then CloudFront, uh, we will get one CNAME record uh, at CloudFront side. And yes, we can access the this website from outside. Okay. So I think I'm almost done with the today's interview uh, session. Yeah, then we will uh, connect in another session, okay, with the another yeah. uh, another topic. Okay, yeah. yeah. I hope I uh, I answer all the questions nearly. Yes, yes, yes. Eighty to ninety percent. Yeah, yes, yes. It's it's all good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. your time. Yeah. Thank you.